Hi, I'm Amanda Palmer and I'm on an iceberg in the most northerly country in the world. For this 48, we've come to Greenland. Buried under nearly 2 million square kilometres of ice, Greenland is the planet's largest island with a population of just 57,000 people. In 2008, they deepened their self-rule from Denmark and now hope to mine their way to full independence. Whoa, it's Greenlandic gold. <laughs> On this 48, we colonise an iceberg. Where should we build our house? And discover the downside of dog sledding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nook, Greenland's capital and its largest city. Around 15,000 people live here and 80% of them are Inuit, descendants of the indigenous people. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. One side or two sides? <laughs> Just one. Today we're going sailing with my father and his friend. Maybe we can see some whales and maybe get some seal, if it's possible. I thought you said we were going sailing. We're going hunting in hunting, fact, are we? Yeah. Hunting is still a deeply revered activity in Greenland. It wasn't so long ago they used kayaks and spears. Now, though, they have slightly better technology. Here's the boat. But all this modernity is just a thin veneer on centuries of tradition. we have to do now is just to look for some seals. This is not the sort of hunting that I was expecting. <laughs> with you and your posh glasses. I can also zoom in and zoom out by <laughs> touching this. <laughs> what are you looking for? I'm looking for seals, small feet come up. For a head to come out of the water? Yeah. You might come and talk to the car the first time the seal comes up to breathe, you have to shoot really quickly. So, so it's out of breath. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it has to come up more. Yeah. yeah. And each time you're going... Yeah. Just 50 years ago, most Inuit were still subsistence hunters, getting nearly all their resources from wild animals. Now they have quotas to hunt what are often protected species. And boys still only become men after their first kill. And these boys were so busy looking for dinner, no one had mentioned how beautiful it was. I love the, uh, the colour of the sky. Oh, look at the iceberg. Can you imagine living somewhere else? Most thing that I miss uh, when I'm away from Greenland is the nature. I'd almost forgotten we had a deadly mission until our second boat spotted a seal and the hunt was really on. We're going to look around because it's near here. The keeper of engineers is going to jump up and not be able to Here, here's the seal. It needs enough air in its lungs to stay afloat until we can reach it. We lost it. Do you think he hit it? I saw blood. You saw the blood, yeah. and, but it sunk very yeah. quickly. Yeah. It knew it was being hunted, didn't it? I mean, if you experience something like that, you know that you're in danger. I wouldn't keep swimming, I'd have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> the next generation want to preserve tradition and benefit from still being part of Denmark, but they face a paradox, as I discovered when a local took me back to school. Mikasok's among the 10% of Greenlanders who can't fluently speak his native language. I've just realised 
the naughtiest boy to school. <laughs> And that means what? It's in the kindergarten. Even the name of the school is tough. The official name is Kokan Ilinam Noktung. And again? Kokan Ilinam Noktung. That's incredible. What does that mean? That means um, uh, the senior high school in the middle of Greenland. It's very specific, your language. Very, yeah. Mm. You build it up with uh, small pieces of words, and when you put them together, they all mean something, each. But those going to university need fluent Danish and often neglect their Greenlandic. It's a paradox because we, we want them to learn English mm -hmm. and Danish yeah. to go abroad. But and to come back. And to come back. Come back yeah. but, but they also have to know their own language yeah. Greenlandic well. Around 160 Greenlanders get university degrees each year. Most of these students are probably going to Denmark to study. And do many of you want to come back then to Greenland or do you maybe to, to, you know, have families and stuff like that? I don't like the cold, actually. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll come back, but it might not be for, for living here. Despite the brain drain, Greenlandic culture is going through a renaissance. Most TV here is in Danish, but Mikasot was taking us to a recording in a converted flat. Then we're going to go into the kitchen, and then we're going to stay there while they start shooting. Of the first program where artists and musicians can debate culture and identity in Greenlandic. We saw an extract of the first ever Greenlandic translation of Macbeth. <laughs> and a discussion of what they should be called Inuit or Galalic. I mean, how often do we debate in other countries? What, what do we call ourselves? Eskimo. Ah! <laughs> I heard um, the, the actress mention the word Eskimo. That's actually a bad word. I mean, it's just something you would call on somebody if you didn't like them. I thought Eskimo meant eat raw fish. Yeah, it does, but, but it not the people call it Eskimo. So what's the consensus? The girl noticed that the uh, younger people prefer to be called Kalala, and the older ones agree on that we Inuit, because the whole world already knows about the Inuit. 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 Part of that confidence comes from the discovery of diamonds, platinum, an estimated 30 billion barrels of oil, and plenty of gold. What are we going to use that hammer for? That's my pointer. <laughs> <laughs> These are rocks. These are special Greenlandic rocks. <laughs> Having personally opened two mines, Ulla is a geological rock star. I mean, he just subtly pulled it out. <laughs> it's like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, isn't it? Whoa. I know. Whoa. One kilo of fine gold. All of a sudden, Elsa's oh got God. very interested in this story. Have you noticed? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's Greenlandic gold. Greenlandic gold. <laughs> so this could mean that you guys have a, a new type of financial independence, like oh, never oh, before. Don't believe that. It takes a lot of patience, uh, in, uh, investment, exploration. So it's not, it's not only a, a success story. But global warming does mean easier access to the wealth buried under Greenland's ice sheet. I mean, it's odd to be talking about global warming in a positive <coughs> way, isn't it? I, mean, I feel strange talking about it. From my understanding, you don't have any environmental movement. Is that right? Almost opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I'm growing uh, potatoes and carrots in my, in my garden. Uh, in, the... in 20 years' time, Greenland could be the Arctic's energy and mineral giant. How do we know that this is not going to ruin Greenland? Uh, most mines in Greenland would be underground mines, which means that you won't really see them except for a hole in the mountain. A hole in the mountain <laughs> and that gold thing, you know, I'm just it's too good to be true. I can understand why some politicians are getting, like, you know, dollar signs in their eyes. And whether Denmark or Greenland gets to keep those dollars is a battle to come. <laughs> 
headed back to Elsie's. I need to take my shoes off, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Where I had a date with a caribou that's reindeer to you and me. You never smelled the smell before. The occasion was Elsie's dad's birthday. Having a good time. And this wasn't just any party, but a traditional Catholic. Are the rules, do people have to ring up and say, I'm definitely coming, or do they just pop in? They just pop in. You open your house and people walk in. Hi! And have some soup, have some cake, some coffee, and they say, thank you, and go again. <laughs> and they expect to feast on the best Greenlandic wildlife. That's the caribou. Preferably caught by the host. We eat it with the soup. It's incredibly tender. Is that your dad's cooking or is that the meat? It's the meat. <laughs> As darkness finally fell, Vitus prepared a real speciality. Elsie, what is this? This is whale. That's the black bit. That's the skin. That's, yeah. I'm That's eating the skin. skin. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Is it very expensive? Mm, nice. Unless you hunt it. Is this like caviar for you guys? Mm. When the Kathamik became more intimate, the singing began for Vitus's birthday. taking Elsie up to Alilisat, 250 kilometres inside the Arctic Circle. Oh, we're here! <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. You too. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Elsie from Nuuk. Yeah. Welcome, countrymen. You need help with your luggage? Um, Anything? I think it would be too embarrassing for you to carry the pink one. you guys. <laughs> This town is located near the famous canal of drift ice. So, uh, it really said means um, icebergs. 20 million tons of ice breaks off the inland southern glacier every day and travels down the Kangia ice fjord into a Lilisat's fishing harbor. Basically, the fishing industry is the biggest industry in Greenland. And climate change is likely to make it bigger. Warming oceans push fish to the relative cool of Greenland's waters, so trawlers barely need to leave the bay, which isn't easy anyway. These little pieces of ice make it harder for boats to exit. <laughs> She's totally worried too. <laughs> Take a look at this one. <laughs> Kinds of icebergs, the, the ragged, jagged ones. They are the more fragile ones, so you want to stay away from them because they can crumble at any time. The icebergs are more unpredictable than before, and it, as in the opposite to when we were kids. So um, that there are too many ice breaking. <laughs> well, take a look at the current. <laughs> this is the closest we get to the icebergs. Because it's too unstable. Mm -hmm. in there. In here, we can do something fun. A little bit scary, maybe. You're up for it? He wanted to put us on an iceberg. Do you want to go on an iceberg, Elsie? Do you want that to be your experience? No, not really. <laughs> Let's get on this one, for example. How do you know it's safe? If you can't see the bottom right, so it's not safe. Oh, I'm cold up here! Are you serious that I should just walk across? Really? Watch where you're going, yeah. How do I watch where I'm going? <laughs> we shouldn't go that far because there. They might have some holes. They might have some holes. Yeah. Why 
Why isn't he coming? It's pretty cold, so we're going to head back home, OK? You think this is funny? Like, you said this is what you like to do for fun, is you leave women stranded on icebergs. Where should we build our house? Home is where you found me. I'm crying cos you never care to ask me. What's that song about? What's that song called? Well, when I was a kid, I witnessed a lot of suicide. It was something that you see monthly. Monthly? Yeah. They have so much le neglect in their homes that the, uh, the youngsters choose to end their lives. Why do you think it's, it's an option here for people? Well, I think it, it is deeply rooted in the Greenlandic mentality because the ancient Inuits when they regarded themselves as useless, the elder ones, you know, especially, uh, they used to wander off in the, um, out in the cold and they never came back. They rather see their grandchildren eat food than themselves. Right, Elsie? Yeah. The Inuit way of life was dismissed as backward in the 1950s when Denmark enforced modernization. Without a clear purpose, many once proud hunters were driven to alcoholism. Now Greenland has the world's highest suicide rate, with young men especially vulnerable. If you think about identity here in Greenland, the young people has uh, this kind of problem that they don't really know who they are. This great cultural clash between two worlds, like the Danish one and the Greenlandic one, caused a lot of friction. Would they choose as an ally? Would they rather want their identity and their pride? Or would they rather join the Danish side and live rich life with cars and modern TV? I could have listened to them for hours, but Kunanwa had other plans. Let's go dog sledding. Dog sledding. Have you done this before? No. This is my first time with you girls. Have a nice trip. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> you got to get home and change your clothes because this doesn't work. What are you okay? talking about? I this, look like a snow queen. This doesn't work. <laughs> I am in beautiful seal. I mean, this is your native animal, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. You look amazing. Okay. <laughs> it's I'm so big. <laughs> Temperatures go down to minus 30 where we were headed. Of course, we were late. And in danger of missing our lift to the Arctic Palatic, a Greenlandic party on sea ice. They're much smaller than I thought. Yeah, you thought they were going to be this big, right? <laughs> <laughs> they were going to be like seals on legs. <laughs> <laughs> is that man? Is you can take dog sled, we go. You, you, you! You, I never did! These men used to survive by hunting and fishing through holes in the sea ice. Now they make more by showing tourists this landscape. Their dogs, an ancient breed brought by Inuit settlers 4,000 years ago, can run non-stop for eight hours. This is they don't tell you about this lovely tranquil experience. But you're behind 15 dogs, and they constantly... Oh. 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 <laughs> and we were on our way to meet over a 1,000 of them. <laughs> you're having trouble get off <laughs> Get a load of the uh, ice glacier. Is that real? Oh, see? That's huge. It's just a corner of the receding glaciers that cover Greenland and were first mapped by explorer and anthropologist Knud Rasmussen. We used this path as a training path. This entire trip is sort of an homage to the icon of the Urusa. Inuit tribes often came together to trade, swap stories and mix up the gene pool a bit, but these meetings could be explosive. In order to solve these frictions, they set up games like this to avoid killing each other. You want to join them? Is this like 
like how the women used to choose the husbands. Who the uh, more dominant male, of course, gets the get, gets all the girls. But the parlor fix not just a chance for alpha males to show off. <laughs> This means a lot to them because they are gathering of the local people. Uh, she feels that they are getting more closer to each other. You don't know what to do, you just stand there and just wait for the ball to hit you. They never send the ball to the seal. This is supposed to be the end of my 48 hours, but it is so beautiful and I've been promised that the way home is going to be so magnificent. So we're going to get up, pack camp, and then head back to Alilisat. With our sleds, now our beds, we went to sleep with a traditional ghost story. Storytelling have always been the identity of the Inuit race. Are you sleepy? He said. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. Good night. We're about to leave camp for eight hours with the dogs. We're heading back to a little bit. But after the calm of the smooth sea ice, the hills need everyone to muck in with the dogs. This is incredibly hard work. Until the final descent that's so steep the dogs go behind. Now who said seals couldn't run? <laughs> well, this is the end of our 48 in Greenland. Did you guys have fun? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. If you can ever do this once in your life, do. Because you'll never, ever regret it.